Thank everyone for being here. We will be approving the minutes from the March 14th and tonight's meeting at our May 9th meeting. So now we will be addressing the budget amendment question from the previous meeting.
Let me explain a little bit. Uh, the bank is asking seven hundred and fifty thousand, but there's sixty three thousand that is needed for the roof repair, and then there is some money that needs to move the teller station. So we are asking that we propose a letter of intent offering six hundred seventy five thousand. If it's accepted by the region bank, the county and the library have 60 days minimum to obtain quotes to do measurement and detailed inspection to see if this will fit and without any additional money. In addition, unknown repairs will be deemed needed at unachievable or other issues arise. Okay, now whenever we do a letter of intent, we've got to submit 1% of what we're asking, which is going to be $6,700. Okay, during this 60 days, if we discover anything for a reason for us not to purchase it, then we get our $6,700 back. If we do purchase it, it goes against the cost of the price of the bank. So we're asking the commissioner to give this a deep consideration for support of our children of Chester County. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to go forth with the letter of intent for six hundred and seventy five thousand to reserve the bank for this little library. We have a motion, we have a second. Second. We have a second. We have a motion by Commissioner Andrea Holland and a second by Commissioner Sandra Myers. If, will there be any discussion? Yes, sir. Well, I, 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 I just want to say, I want to say this. Uh, for anybody that votes no tonight, and I'm speaking for myself, I'm not speaking for anybody up here. Anybody that votes no tonight is being painted with a white brush. We're against the library. We're against the kids. That is not true, speaking for me. We have been forced tonight to make a vote to buy the library, to buy the region's bank for the library. I would vote tonight if I had the opportunity to remodel and expand the current bill. That's not put before me tonight. I just simply want to say. Whoever votes no tonight, ask them why they voted no, and I assure you they will tell you it's not that they are against the library and they are against the children of this county. I give you my 100% commitment. If this vote passes tonight, I'm going to live with it. I'm going to sleep sound tonight. If it fails tonight, I will be committed to helping the library. I just want you, I want people to know, this is not a vote against the library or against the children of this county. My vote will be against purchasing another brick and mortar building. And I just want that on record tonight, because I don't want people hating me and going out saying that Tim Crow hates the library and Tim Crow hates the children. That is nothing further from the truth.
700 square feet more than what they got. Would anyone else like to make a comment? My, my biggest concern with a lot of this folks is the speed with which all of a sudden we're trying to move forward right now. We do have the time. And with the feasibility study that we were recent, very recently given, the guy who wrote the feasibility study says we should look into getting the numbers on everything before we start jumping forward and going ahead. And that was provided by the mayor's office just this past week. We've got at least a dozen probably closer to 18 different folks asking, requesting funds. So when we, we don't have a limited, we don't have an unlimited check. We have a limited amount of money. So again, as Tim said, I think when we look at alternatives for what everybody wants, if you have kids, you have to have those conversations about need versus want. And the needs, I think, I think all of our departments, all of our officials do a good job of providing the needs. But they like more, of course they do. Do we want to support as much as we can, uh, especially our children? But that's not just the only way we can support our children. And there's other things that the library does also, not just for the children. There's a lot of stuff for a lot of adults and other folks in that county who, who need some help. But there's a lot of different entities that do that. And so, again, my recommendation has always been let's get those numbers. Uh, Manny did the feasibility study and said this is incomplete. It really doesn't do you much good. I'm starting with numbers. But until we put dollar figures to all these things, uh, you're kind of, you know, it's, it's, it would be like you, you have somebody come and put a roof on your house and then a month later <coughs> asking them how much it costs. It's just, uh, I think we need to be a little more prudent with our uh, distribution of funds. And again, the only reason you want to push us through is because of, I don't know, somebody's got an agenda for expediency. It just makes sense to get the numbers. First, don't get the cart before the horse. And you heard the saying, haste makes waste. We do need not to waste the tax every morning. It needs to be done prudently and with a plan, an overall plan. This is just one committee. We've got all those other committees with, again, over a dozen, probably, like I said, 18 different clubs that certainly can use the money. And it's, it's a challenge for us. I'll be the first one to sit here and tell everybody, yeah, we're going to be challenged by this. And we're going to get contentious at times, but we're going to have to suck it up and go on. Because that's our job. We took this, this duty on to discuss this stuff. I mean, we said we'll be mature in this. But I, I'm just begging that we get dollar figures before we start dedicating money. Because I don't want to be the one after we get rid of the money to have six other people still in line. Do you want to be the one to tell Dick Stevenfield? Sorry, ran out of money. Do you want to tell TCAT? Not going to be able to add anything else. You want to tell the solid waste with their weight, their new train station and the whole expansion they have? Sorry, we ran out of money. You want to tell Blair you can buy him a plate, but we can't buy him a car, so maybe he can buy a plate control. I don't know. These are the decisions we have to make. But we need numbers to do it. We don't need to push this through quickly just because we want to check a mark that says, look what we did. First of all, that's disingenuous as it is because the only reason we got this money is because of a lot of suffering that a lot of people dealt with. And that, that makes it doubly more important for us to do due diligence and to do this right because it's very important. We want to help all people. I hope you all understand that. But you understand that there's a competition for this money. But that's our job to go through it all and make sure we can do this. And again, We've had lots of conversations. Very often, ask you personally, where do you stand on? I want to make sure that people know where you stand on this. Do you want to buy that brick and mortar building with that much more how much we got to put in stuff to have another building owned by the county? Regardless of what other assets we have, it's another building. I want to I'd like to know where you stand on. Well, I personally think this would be an excellent idea. I think it would be a great showcase or for the county to people coming into our county from north to here I think it would be a great representation of the county for that to be the library the library is not just for kids I know 
Uh, we do say a lot a library is for children, but our library is for everyone. I don't know if anyone's been out there lately. Uh, there's all ages out there at the library. There's youth, I mean even one and two year olds and their young parents. They're they're they enjoy the library a lot. Uh, it it uses for com uh, computer means. Well, Miss Savannah, you just dealt with all the uses of the library. I, I've been out there a couple times. I hate to say years ago I wasn't out there much, but I've heard so much about it and she talked about the traffic being in the library. It's not just the same ones all the time like people are saying. It's different ones all the time. And it can be used, it can be a great asset for the county. Uh, and especially for all the different rooms and the area that there is up there. I believe it's the upgrade that said. Would you please mention for our included addition and the number of people you see? Yes, I have that. So you should have in your packets, there is a grant proposal that we created um, back in March, and then it, it does say 4,995 square feet. I've had people approach me recently asking where I got that number. That number has been on our reports that are reported to the state library system for about 20 years. If anyone needs confirmation of that, I have documents here tonight that do prove that that is the reports we have, that's the knowledge we have. So 4,995 square feet is the current building square footage that I have. Now, the actual part that we can utilize for patrons for our computer usage, technology trainings, programs, Anything like that is between 3,200 square feet and 33,000. The rest of the building is a storage space area, large bathrooms for the public, and a dressing room and a small conference room. We cannot house most of our programs in that conference room anymore. So now we're doing programs in the main part of the library, which then takes away from other patron experiences. You may have someone that comes in. <coughs> They are sensitive to sounds and things. So if you have a program with children and you cannot have it separated from the main library, we are no longer adequately meeting the needs of those patrons. Other services we do offer, we have books. We have DVDs, we have audio books, yes. But we also have copying services. Just last month, we helped with 947 copies. We also helped with 32 faxes. Those copies and faxes are things from time cards, disability, workers' comp, unemployment, medical forms, anything like that. But the faxes, most of the time, it's time cards. Someone cannot get paid unless they have the ability to fax those and we are offering that service. Last month, on average, we are doing 19 tech trainings that last over <coughs> Some of these last 15 minutes, some of these have lasted an hour, and we do not charge the patrons for this. They come in, they need help, we help them as long as we're able to without violating security. Under 15 minutes, we helped 115 people. This range for showing them how to save pictures on their phone with their grandbabies. It ranged to showing them how to take a picture of the document, send it to a printer, to filling out a job application on their phone. There is no one else around here that does this. We are the only ones that are offering that service and for free. The programs are another thing we have. Weekly at story time, we have at least 30 kids. This morning we had 40, not including the adults. We have teen programs, adult programs, and senior programs. Every single one of our programs is free. The way I afford these programs is I try to get every grant that I possibly can so that there's no money coming from the county for these. Just since 2020, I have gotten $38,000 in grants. And that was July 2020. That is up in the past years. That is what I try to do so we can offer our citizens the best. I may not be elected, but I'm a public servant just as you are. We also offer meeting space. We have had several groups that have had to leave us, homeschool and tutoring groups, because they do not have the space to meet in our rooms anymore. So we are now not serving portions of our community because we are too small. 
We also have an increased need since COVID for independent testing study areas and meeting areas. People come to us to meet with their lawyers virtually, their doctors virtually, to do a job interview. We have caseworkers that try to come, but we have one conference room. If it's in use, no one else can use it. If the library is occupying it, nobody else can use it. We desperately need more space, specifically small areas, to accommodate these people. Because this is a service that became necessary to COVID, and it's not going away. It was also a problem with our books. We have a section right now that I cannot order any more books in. I literally have no room to put another shelf for it. I've added every which way, turn it every which way, I cannot add any more. And it is one of our top checked out sections. So we're starting to get to another point where I am disservicing this community because I don't have what I need to do my job for the citizens. It has been mentioned, expand the building. We have discussed that. Yes, that is an option. However, there are things that you don't see. Because of where the building is built, there is a severe humidity problem. For most people, that's not going to be an issue, but we are literally a building full of books. Humidity with books leads to moisture on the books. Moisture on the books leads to the mold. That is spread from book to book. So then I am stuck pulling perfectly good books that have book mold that will destroy our collection out of the collection, getting rid of them and having to spend more money to replace those books because our community is using them. We have six dehumidifiers in the library. Six. We empty them two to three times a day. Even with an expansion, you add a commercial dehumidifier on the unit. I was told that it is most likely not going to take away all that humidity problem. That is a huge problem for us. There's also the fact that with an expansion, once we expand, there's no other way we can go. We are stuck right there. There's also the fact that that's going to take away from some of our parking areas. And there are things that we do need that because of the current layout of the building, we will not be able to achieve. So there are some things that will be lost. I know some of you feel personally that this has been moved on too quickly, but I will say that since 2012, the States of Canada has come to y'all countless times and expressed how badly we need more space. This is not a new problem. This has been going on for years. We've been supplying documentation for years. Every county commission meeting, I come to you, I tell you what we're doing, I show you that we're growing. We're not going to stop growing. And if you want the needs of the community met, we need to help the library. With the Regents building, Yes, it is not as many square footage as expanding on the library. However, the setup there is different and it works for us. Those offices are very valuable as they can be used for the individual study areas and they're already in existence. They're created, they're there. There's room for our Tennessee room collection. There's room for the two staff members that need an office to have an office. There is a drive-through area. When COVID hit, we started doing curbside. That is something that our patrons still want, especially the elderly and the young people that have children, lots of small children, that they don't want to drive out of the car just for a two-minute trip. Right now, if we offer the curbside, and we do still do it, we have to completely unman the desk, go outside, so there's no one at the desk to help anyone in the library. Anyone can go really wherever they want it, to be honest. With the Regions Bank building, it does come with a drive-thru. There is the drawer, and we are able to fit books, hot spots, and different items like that in there. We can offer our curbside services that way. For the shoots, there are also possibilities of doing the faxes, printing, copying, anything like that curbside. Um, I know it was mentioned price for fire. I would like to point out that, if we're being completely honest, the library just had a sprinkler system installed one month ago. So that expense was going to be something either way. And with the expansion, it'll have to be installed in the expansion part as well. Part of the letter of intent is to give us an opportunity before committing to do more due diligence. 
to do the research we need to make sure that this truly is a good space for the library like we believe it is. We took measurements and that's how we come to this decision. It gives us a chance to get quotes for any repairs that need to be made. Remodeling on the inside for us is very minimal, but it allows us to get quotes for that. It allows us to get the chance to inspect and see if there's anything that we don't see on the front end. A letter of intent just allows us to hold this building so that we can do this. And then we have the option to purchase. Oh, Savannah, you have got 4,001. That's a high volume, one of the high ones here in the county mm -hmm. that we're doing service. I also had questions from the people here and others that said, well, if we get the internet searches, it would go down. Explain that. So it's we did see a decrease in the middle of COVID from that, but it was not a huge decrease. We are still seeing very steady numbers in our technology usage, our hotspot usage. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, the hotspot is a small device they can take to their home, which we offer this for free, and it gives them internet at their home. Many of the people, and I have personally asked them, many of the people that are on our hotspot list that use our computers, they currently have access to broadband. They cannot afford it. That problem is not going to go away. If they can't afford it, they can't afford it. And that's why they're coming to us. Yes, uh, Russell, can you address the cost it would be to expand? Would the cost exceed what we would pay for this bill? Okay, uh, we got a quote that was 835000 I believe, uh, to do an addition to the library. And like you said, uh, it's going to crank them up pretty good out there because it gets all of the uh, west side of that our space there. And then, uh, I don't know, everything was included, like you mentioned fire and what have you. I didn't see the plan. But you're talking about roughly another a million dollars versus a million dollars for the bridging fund, which is already existing, which that we can make some of these moves to help some of these kids to keep them suffering any longer. If we want to put it off and make them suffer another two or three or four years, we're not that kind of people. I know none of you want that. I know none of the commissioners. Oh, I got somebody else who I don't want to speak. Tracy, you want to talk? Thank you for that. Thank you, Mayor Hutcherson, and all the commissioners uh, for the opportunity to serve on this um, library and the Park Purpose Board. I think the first clarification that I want to say tonight is tonight's meeting is not to purchase the region time. That is not what we're here for. The purpose for tonight is to give us what she, uh, what Savannah just said. We're just asking for 60 days. So I think as individuals and business owners, that if you had an opportunity to have time, Joe, everything you said is 100% agreement. Everyone in this room has the opportunity to come before this commission and ask for the dollars that are within the guidelines for COVID. Um, the library was highly affected by COVID. Carl Perkins Center was devastated by COVID. Our families were devastated by COVID that our center serves. Um, Kirby can speak to you about how quickly our numbers went up once COVID was subsided and our school systems opened back up. Um, how it takes a child about six months to uh, build a relationship with their teacher uh, enough to tell them the worst secret of their life. That's not, I'm not here to talk about the Call Purpose Center and what we do. Um, is the uh, ballpark worthy? Most definitely. And uh, if you go out there to those fields and see how many kids are playing on them uh, and the families and all that, it's, it's, it's needed. The Paul Perkins Center serves 200 children. That's not counting family members. That's not counting grandmas, grandmas, aunts, and uncles, and families. 
So we can't we can't bring our uh, children to fund you. We can't let you see them. Uh, I don't know them. Um, I've never met any of them. Uh, but I do know we serve them and we serve their families. And uh, but tonight I think we really want to focus on is this building worthy of the amount of money we're talking about. And Savannah's done a great presentation. Uh, Russell made the, the uh, suggestion, and so I don't want us to get confused with we're voting tonight to ask you for 60 days. We're not voting tonight to ask you to vote five years from now. That's not, that's not the question. We're asking for 60 days. In that 60 days, Joe mentioned the visibility setting. In that 60 days, that gives hopefully every community that has been assigned to come before you and say, here is what our need is, and for them to give you the accountability and the responsibility that it will pass the COVID audit. The audit will come. And for every dollar we spend, whether it's capital projects or whatever, everything we spend will have to be accountable or you will have to reach back into the taxpayers' dollars pockets to get the dollars paid for it. So we're not here to ask for 750000 or 675000 We're not here to ask for anything tonight other than when you make a commitment to vote for give us 60 days. The 60 days is for Savannah and the library team and they're here with great support. They're just asking give us some time to do this. And we're saying, hey, that's a great idea because it gives each of you 60 days to hear from all of the family, to hear from everyone that's interested in trying to see if they're validated for these funds. I have read the ARPA funds, and the new one is SLR or something maybe. And when it first came out, it had these really, really strict guidelines. And now it's come out, it's more open. And everybody's like saying, well, now we do this and this and this. Yes, you can. But it still has to be tied to COVID because the audit is coming. And for all of you that are in business and ever been audited, it's no fun. So I'm, I'm, I'm just here to clarify what uh, Commissioner Clayton has said, what the motion was that Ms. Andrea made and Ms. Sandra uh, second. That's all the motion is. It's not saying we're going to buy a week of the because I think everyone in here deserves the chance that made your same. And I think I'm repeating myself twice, but <laughs> and I'm very passionate about it. Excuse but it's while just, you're up there, I won't make a comment. Uh, if the Regent Bank denied our uh, intent letter, then, uh, you know, it's, we, it, it's over or we got to back up some again. I don't know if this is what the committee recommended to the offer them to get the letter of intent in to get those 60 days that we can finalize some of our questions. And, and those uh, guidelines came from Ashley Walker. She is the broker for Regions Bank. She has been down, I know, three times to show the building. Um, so um, those are the guidelines. And we're not asking for you to vote to say we're buying the Regions Bank building. But that's not it at all tonight. And I just wanted to clarify that. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Well, will we have to come back in 60 days to vote again? Oh, uh, on the law. I don't mind voting over the board tonight, but I don't know if I think 60 days or that. Uh, I guess it all depends if they accept it, and if we find anything different, that's going to be costly to us. I think it's the way that happens. Yes, sir. We have to vote again. What was the most? You're contradicting yourself there. You're saying if you're asking if you have to come back and vote again, and you're saying that yes, vote tonight means you're approving the purchase if the letter of consent the office is accepted. So which is it? Thank you. We we are wanting to uh, vote to put in a letter of intent with the one percent earnest money where we can check the building out and if it meets all the guidelines that we need and that we can and uh, would satisfy for the library we would still like to continue to purchase 
but we that would be 60 days and we would need to uh, okay. come and vote on it again before that 60 days would be the best because if you go over it, you lose the 1%. Okay. So we would need to, we would need to vote on it before the 60 days. Am I fair, Mr. Martin? Well, it depends on the action the commission takes. If you only vote to approve a letter of intent, you don't approve the purchase, it would require another vote. If you vote to approve the letter of intent and the contract consistent with it, it would not require another vote. So there was a motion. So what? The motion would be. The motion was that that we would approve to proceed with purchasing with the intent letter and approve for our need and the library need. So what's the how how we close the motion? You heard the motion. What, what's your opinion? What's your legal opinion on that? But again, the library is a great if it meets our needs and library needs and it's a done deal. You're saying the way Russell just worded that, you're saying it beats it then. It's exactly Let's do make a clarification on our uh, motion. Uh, here's, the way, here's the way I've got it written now. We need to make sure we got it right. But here's what it says Motion to move forward with the purchase of the former Regents Bank building for the library use and offer a letter of intent for $675,000. That would be the motion, and we have a second to that motion. Okay, if you put up earnest money and you don't want to follow through with buying that building, you do not get that earnest money back. That's right. We was told that we would if it was within the 60 days. Yes, we got to be clear. If we do written notice within the 60 days, asking for our earnest money back, on the agenda that we have tonight, it says plainly, moving forward to purchase Regions Bank building for Chester County Library. I, That's all it says. I did not make that, but the motion that has been placed for is for specifically an intent to purchase. Oh, What's the topic of this? I mean, letter of intent. There's so many words happening right now. Letter of intent. Everybody in the county has something to say about buying this building, and we've been talking about it for years, and we still haven't got a vote on it. So we have not heard about the conversation for this year. Can you clarify the motion? It's not a part of that. Clarify the motion, and this is this will be it. Just to get it. Go ahead. Okay. The committee is bringing before the committee to move forward with a letter of intent to purchase the previously known Bridges Bank building for the sole purpose of the Chester County Library of $675,000 with a letter of intent, if accepted by the Bridges Bank, the County Library would have 60 days minimum to obtain quotes like very much detailed inspection and all that for the repairs. And then, if we're within the 60 days and we find that we can't purchase it uh, because of needing more, our money for the one percent would be refunded. So you're putting on a test. There is one phrase that was left out, if you don't mind. Uh, if any additional unknown repairs be deemed needed and unachievable or other issues arise, with written notice, the county can leave the negotiations and be returned to earnest money pay 1% of the cost of the earnest price. This is simply giving us 60 days to check things out, see if it fits the needs, see if there are any extra things that need to be done to that building. It's not a purchase, it is a letter of intent. Which is so. I understand what you're saying, but I'm not sure that's what the motion is. Motion is And what I'm asking, we can get a clarification or a amendment to the motion. I can't do this. The person made the motion that is that 
it's clear that we're just simply about to stand, all right? If we vote yes tonight, all we're doing is giving a letter of intent authorizing 1% for all this to go forward and get checked out. If within the 60 days we find it's appropriate, it comes back here to the commission, the full commission, to decide if it's appropriate for a second vote. Is that, are you willing to make that your motion? That there's going to, we're going to come back and it be approved. In other words, everybody gets to hear what all the issues are or not, and then we get to approve it or not within 60 days. Okay, now, what I was going to say is if we've done the purpose with this motion, that we wouldn't have to come back. Now, listen, I'll read it slow. County Commission to move forward with a letter of intent to purchase the previously known vision bank for the sole purpose of the Texas County Library in that amount. With a letter of intent, if accepted by reason, the County Library would have 60 days to obtain the quote, the measure, and the detailed inspection. And if any additional cost for these repairs or anything that we didn't think that we should have to pay, we would get our 1% cost of purchase return. And that's what it's that's what I'm saying. The question that is who decides? Who decides? The full commission? The mayor? The committee? Yeah. You said about these contingencies, who's deciding if it's good or bad? We do have a library that has several years over this building expansion of the projects related to what we could possibly do. We, uh, listen. <laughs> from the motion stated, let's, uh, from the motion stated that we get a letter of intent, we have to one percent down, and within the 60 days, if all done, we will come back together and make a decision whether we continue with the purchase or ask for our one percent back. Is that, is that good to amend the motion? I have a question. I've got to say something first. <laughs> this is what I said. I was about to say the motion that I made was after Mr. Clayton said what he said that everybody heard. Everybody heard exactly what he said. This is what I said. I make a motion to move forward with the letter of intent for $675,000 to reserve the bank building with that letter of intent for the library. That's what I want to say. I've got a question. Yes, sir.
which is again what we need the time, the letter of intent to do. You're not allowing the building to get those costs unless you do a letter of intent and successful budget. So, in other words, mayor and you more on here is want to give a million dollars. That's what it's going to cost or more time to get fire protection and everything. But this building down here to get 700 more square feet. That does not make any sense to me, and I don't think it does anybody here think, think about it. I'm sorry, but you're not seeing the whole picture. You're looking at security square footage. You're not seeing the services we gain, the outdoor space that we gain for our programs, the storage space, the office space, the conference room space we gain, the independent study areas we gain. You're not seeing that part of it. It may look like that little amount of square feet to you, but because of the layout, it can achieve more than what our current layout can achieve. And with an expansion, there will be certain things that we will not be able to achieve, even with an expansion. All right, thank you everyone for their comments. Could I say something? Uh, I have a comment. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes, sir, Mr. Creed, this be the only one we have. Okay. Uh, what this is doing, as you all know, this thing here that we thought we was getting for nothing, we were going to get all this money that someone would be given to us, so we took advantage of it. What it's doing, is dividing this whole county. It is dividing this county like the Mr. Crow said. That's what I told you last night. So we should just give it back. Yeah. Well, I don't know. What are you saying? You want me to agree with you? No, I, just, I would just agree with what you said. Okay. Because Thank if it wasn't for I this, appreciate it. I agree with the library. Now, thing. we have let this thing, it's something like I said, we've been better off tonight if we've not, not even gotten this money. I mean, you see what it's called right here in the county. I mean, it's, it's divided. Where there's 18 of you commissioners, and I know if you go to vote, it's going to be half and half, or maybe it might be a tile or whatever. But it's hard for the citizens of Chester County to realize they don't know if they're making it. If anything is divided, I don't think you should decide on anything right now until you can get something. It's too much division to vote on something this important. And I don't know it's important to buy it, but, but what's the most important thing is. It is tearing this county. It, it's just like Washington, D.C. It's trickled down to Chester County. And that it is hurting us. We've been better off if there's never been any COVID money out there. It would have been better off. And now, as far as the, as the library, I don't think anybody, if we didn't have a library in Chester County and we was looking for locations to build a library, I don't think anybody would be interested in building a library where. You're Ben and Lewis. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, I was out there this afternoon. That's a beautiful building. Beautiful. Go out there and look at it. It's Tulips in front of it. It's a peaceful, restful. It's a nice area. I don't think you'll ever get this building out there to looking like a library. Mm -hmm. I don't think you'll ever do it. I mean, the asset we've got is the location that you've got the library in. I mean, that's an asset. I mean, it's right there by the, by the schools. I was out there tonight, they're playing ball, they're, it just looks like a, it's a village. I, some famous woman said it takes a village, but I'm certainly not agreeing with This is for the lady. <laughs> anyway, I just don't see, I'm not against buying the bank buildings, but to move the library out there, to me, is, is just, uh, right, well, the best you. asset you've got is buying a property like that for the library. Now sometimes there's an old saying that it's better to be quiet and have everybody that it's better to be quiet and wonder than to speak and have everybody else wonder. So y'all can wonder about it. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you. Well, as uh, I want to clarification, I want to know absolutely certain. And it has to come from the whole promotion and clarification. And if we vote yes that it will return back here for us to have a final vote and decision as to whether or not to go forward after they've done all the... If I didn't say it that way, and I read exactly what I said, but I was trying to remember exactly what he was saying, and if anybody else can remember word for word what was said in a quote, 
good for you, but um, yes, I would think it was, I, I need to amend that. I want to make sure it's a word, and hear the lawyer say, that brings it back here. That clarifies the then really vote just to move forward, look at it, study it, figure it out, and bring it back. That's all we do. And then we all, because it's what he said is a fact of the board. But there ain't a soul here that I love and I hear a lot. Of. And Patricia, I do know. Okay? I've seen that. So this is it. But that's not what we're voting for. We're voting on the library. We're not even voting for the election commission. We're voting on the library. So for the library. For the library. For the library. That's not what we're voting for. But I just want to make sure as if we can bring it back. Because what I want to know is if we want everybody to hurt me, then we I want to take these ladies and there's a lot of library want to be work. You tell me it's gonna beat it, it's gonna be good to you. You tell me it's gonna I'm gold on that, but I ain't gonna question. I don't question when I came up here, I don't question the sheriff about his part. I don't question the trustee. Or the, yeah, we put those people in, I don't get meddling all their stuff. So I don't feel trust them what you If we don't make sure what you do, we'll find somebody else. And I'm not saying, all right? That's <laughs> <laughs> the truth. And so I don't lean to you on that until you say it'll work. I think you work for it. But what I want most of all is when we get through the end of this process, the $3.4 million that we should have never been sent to us in the first place because you're paying heavily in your hand and that's a done deal. We didn't decide. But we can work through this in such a way that we build most of our votes. Tim and I here we're trying to say you're right. And I know you're a man. I ain't questioning anything about it. Alright? I'd like for us as much as possible to when these votes go forward, they're like most of our votes. 18 of them. And that's why I, we may not get there, but we can at least get it. Give it a good shot. Is this community work? Yeah. And there's no reason it's supposed to be invited. And I agree with you. all the way to hinge. All right? And so if, if, it's, if that's clear, that we're just voting to move forward to just consider it, put the letter in, and then you come back and find out, they may tell you, no, we ain't even interested. We won't send it back and it's all settled. And nobody has to vote then. That clear that we're bringing it back. Is that the motion? Andrea has amended her motion and we'll have to get acceptance from Ms. Sandra there. Yes. I'm going to read this again. Hopefully this will satisfy all parties. Well, let me say one thing before you do that. I want to make it clear. I'm not going to risk that. I thought this was all about the library tonight. The, the comments I made had not anything to do with the uh, Carl Perkins Center. I'm as much for Carl Perkins Center as anybody in here that have donated. Very liberally to the Carl Perkins Center, and I thought it was all about libraries. So if I offended anyone, by, if my comments meant I was against the Carl Perkins Center, I am not. I want to see them get wherever they want to go and then do something and improve. So I want to be clear. I want to be that I'm against it. Thank you for your time. All right, Andrew, make the motion to go forward with a letter of intent for $670,000 to the uh, Reserve the bank building for library use for a 60 day period with 1% earnest money down, and she amended it to include a final vote by the, by the county commission within 60 days if the offer is accepted. That is correct. That's good. I so move. We have a motion on that, and Ms. Sandra, do you still second the motion? Hopefully there is no more discussion about it since this is the clarity. Uh, we take a roll call vote, please. Jack Gard. No. Jerry Lowe. No. Kevin Faulkner. No. Al McKinnon. No. Andrea Holland. Yes. Jackie Butler. No. Ann Moore. Yes. Carolyn Higgins. Yes. Russell Clayton. Yes. Jerry Emerson. No. Sandra Hires. Yes. Joseph Malero. No. 
Barry Smith. No. Is that uh, Diane Jordan? Yes. Mike Alexander. I'm on a make a statement that I'm on the library board and I think that's a conflict of interest made by others, so I'm going to have to sign. Jerry Bell. Yes. Todd Lewis. No. You didn't call me. <laughs> Thank you. 